Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Tony Harbin, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This video here is basically uh, me giving feedback upon an interview that we had yesterday with a victim of a so-called preacher who was arrested and just recently uh, sentenced to five, only five years probation. That's all he was sentenced to was five years probation. So the story I did on a so-called preacher by the name of Leroy Lane. Now you can search it up, you can search the stories up, you can see news articles and things like that. And uh, I did it last year on this so-called preacher. He was arrested, you know, I believe for sexual misconduct. So we had the victim, one of the victims uh, to be interviewed on this channel yesterday. So you haven't checked out that interview uh, with the victim, Jacqueline Pranta. Uh, and the situation happened out of there, uh, Benton Harbor, Michigan. Y'all can check that interview out. She gives her testimony, strong testimony. Thank everybody for tuning in because it was alive. And people sent off encouragement and things like that. Uh, for sure. So the situation with that so-called preacher, you know, uh, they had the evidence and things like that, witnesses and stuff like that. So after he was sentenced, after he was sentenced recently uh, to five years probation and also had to register as a uh, sex offender for about uh, 15 years, uh, to my understanding, he got right back in the pulpit. He got right back in the pulpit. Now, I, I, I tend to do stories like this because I want to expose these type of creeps out there who just try to use the pulpit, who try to use the word of God uh, for the wicked hidden agenda on the people in general. I mean, uh, the, the young victim had a uh, strong testimony that should be brought to more parts of the world because I know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of victims out there. The sad thing is uh, they live in fear that they don't want to share their testimony. Or, or, or they may feel embarrassed upon a testimony and things like that if they happen to share it. Or people are going to blame them for the situation happening. You know, uh, she mentioned that, you know, uh, the so-called preacher told her, uh, don't share it with the public. Otherwise, he was going to commit suicide. Listen, sir. Listen, Mr. Leroy Lane. Listen, 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 listen. You did that to these people. You understand? You did it. I hope you're watching this. I hope your family members is watching this. You did that to yourself. How are you going to victimize people? How are you going to molest people? How are you going to do these things upon people? And you're supposed to be a so-called preacher. You're supposed to be feeding the people the word of God, breaking it down to their soul, to their spirit, and things like that so they could be on the right path to God in general. You don't sit here and, and, and touch on people and things like that. You don't sit here and try to have a controlling and dictatorship type of uh, mentality as she explained and things like that. Listen, you touched on those people. You molested some of them people in the congregation. So if it gets out to the public, it's out already in general because I'm going to keep talking about it. I don't care if you like it or not. I'm going to keep exposing this. And as many times as she wants to come on here to share her story and things like that and her podcast and, and, and things of that nature, she will be allowed on here to share those stories, to share those testimonies uh, and things like that. Uh, even with other people that can relate to the matter, you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that email me, inbox me, text message me that they have stories similar to this. You know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's my job to use this platform to put people on notice. You know, if anybody got a testimony that you want to share to the world, that you want to expose and put people on notice like these so-called preachers, like Leroy Lane, who said that he was going to commit suicide if it got brought out to the public. Listen, you failed yourself, bruh. You understand? So uh, I, I, I'm not the person you want to look for for advice. If you're going to feel as though that you want to commit suicide upon the, uh, the things you have done, uh, you know, on those victims. Listen, you, you touched on those people. You knew right from wrong. It's, it, it, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure that out that you cannot put your hands on young girls. You cannot put your hands on young people. Listen, you can't put your hands on anybody, you know what I mean, in that type of manner unless it's your wife. And even some people out there have been arrested for, you know, uh, R-A-P-E-D, uh, their wife or their spouse in general. You know what I mean? So you brought that on yourself. So whether you want to commit suicide, you feel embarrassed and things like that, me personally, I don't care. You know what I mean? Uh, somebody two weeks ago from his camp, I don't know if it was one of his members or his family members or whatever the case may be, because I know a lot of times when I expose these creeps, when they are in the news, 
You know, whether you're from California, whether you're from Texas, New York, New Jersey, I don't care if you're from my hometown, Jersey City, New Jersey. You know, I, if I see the story, if somebody notify me, or if I catch it online or something like that, I will expose it in general. So I'm the wrong person to get advice from, uh, Mr. Leroy Lane. So if you feel as though that you want to commit suicide because the story is out there, or you feel some type of embarrassment that you know uh, somebody is coming forward, uh, you know, from the things, from the horrible things you have done to them, that could affect a person's uh, mentality. That can affect a person's emotions. That can really affect a person later on down the road. But it's a blessing that this sister is strong to share her testimony and things like that. You know, you're gonna have some people in his camp. You're gonna have some people in his family that try to put the blame on a victim or victims in general. You got so-called preachers out there like that. Because time and time again, when I do these stories, like I said before my lives or recently, I have it's these family members of these people that I put on blast from the news articles. They reach out to me to try to claim uh, their innocence and whatnot. No way. If there's evidence out there on Leroy Lane and he uh, so-called apologized in the courtroom. Now, this man apologized in the courtroom. This man apologized to the victim. You understand that? For his wrongdoings. So why would, why would he want to commit suicide in, in reference to the things that he did wrong? You failed yourself. You understand that? Listen, if you feel embarrassed and things like that, then guess what? You shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have done it at all. And the thing is, he's back in the pulpit, huh? Who, who, listen, who would support this guy? Who would sit there in, in the pulpit hearing him teach and preach the word of God? Knowing he had a hidden agenda from the get-go years ago. Who's to say that wasn't his first time uh, victimizing people like that, you know? Because the thing is, when these creeps like that get caught, especially uh, those so-called preachers that are in the pulpit, you know, they, they just so happened to get caught that time. You know what I mean? That time of that arrest and that conviction or the convictions of the evidence that law enforcement has gathered. Who's to say? And ma majority of them have been doing that way back when. They just, they just didn't get caught for those acts. They just happened to get caught for, the, for those few acts that they got caught uh, in recent terms. But what about the past? There's, there's victims from the past. I've spoken to people that has been molested, that has been touched and stuff like that from grown uh, creeps like that, but they was afraid to speak up. They feel embarrassed and things like that. Listen, there's no need to be fearful from people like that. There's no need to be embarrassed to share your story with the world because somebody else out there could relate to that. You know what I mean? And, and you could be encouraged by one another in general. So my final message to uh, Leroy Lane you know, who was arrested that I did a story on and for his peoples that uh, reached out to me on my cell phone. They sent me a text, they sent me a flyer of him uh, having some type of service at his uh, so-called church. Listen, I could care less. You know what I mean? I could care less. I would, listen, I wouldn't even want to walk past the church he preaching. I'm crossing the street, how about that? You know, <laughs> listen, I don't want to be near that trash. You know what I mean? How can a man, how could you support a man like that and you could, and you still call him your preacher to that person that uh, texts my phone uh, about a week and a half ago trying to justify him? Leroy Lane, so-called pastor Leroy Lane, you know what I mean, who was sentenced to only five years probation? Now, when I do these stories on these so-called preachers, the average amount they get is about 10 to 15 years in prison. But the young sister mentioned that uh, the wife of Leroy Lane works in the court system. Huh? It ra listen, it raises a question. <laughs> you understand that? It ra listen, it raises a question. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's not what you know, right? Come on, come on, come on. It's what? It's who you know. You understand that? But I'm going to continue to expose these creeps, you know? And if you're a victim out there, if you are a victim out there, listen, please, you, you can share your story on this platform. No need to be, no need to be scared. No need to be embarrassed because, I, listen, I don't care how they feel. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, it's, listen, I don't care how these so-called preachers feel when they see videos like this on my, on my channel. You know what I mean? Because I ain't scared of nobody. 
You know what I mean? I ain't scared of none of them clowns, none of them cowards. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. Listen, have respect for people, so-called preachers. You know, if you got a wicked agenda, what you doing in the pulpit? You don't need to be up there at all. But we know how the devil works at the end of the day, going around terrorizing in general. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. I'm none of that. I'm just a regular brother. I'm a regular YouTuber at the end of the day that like to just speak facts in general. All right. I'm Tony Harvin. I thank you all for tuning in. And do remember, do remember uh, the link will probably be in the description box, you know, of the interview with the victim, Jacqueline uh, Prantum. I thank you all for tuning in. I'm Tony Harvin. I'm signing off. May you all have a wonderful day. I'm out. Peace.